this is uh, Jim from Discovery Divers. Uh, today, as the title says, uh, we're going to be having uh, kind of a little bit of a mini workshop on trim. Uh, I'll be using my, my assistant, Scuba Steve, here uh, to show you body position and as, a, as an educational aid. This, uh, this is an outline of the things I'll be covering. Uh, so what is trim? And we're going to contrast that with buoyancy because the two terms are very often used together, buoyancy and trim. Uh, why it's important, how to achieve, we're going to talk about arm and leg action, uh, body positioning, um, head position, uh, tank size, how tank size affects this, and exposure protection because that's also a big uh, effect on this as well. Okay, what is, what is trim? Um, so contrast with buoyancy, right? So buoyancy basically is is how we're floating in the column in terms of are we have a net buoyant effect a net negative effect or are we as the textbook says neutrally buoyant right which means that basically only our breath is affecting us right we take a, a, a breath in we'll go up a bit we exhale and it goes down a bit right that would be uh, neutrally buoyant um, so trim, uh, contrasting, trim is actually your positioning in the water, right? Am I head up? Uh, am I head down? Um, sideways? You know, what is, what is my, my trim like? And, and for... why it's important, uh, you know, I'm sure that, you know, if you watch a lot of YouTube, you see a lot of bad divers, uh, you know, who are kind of kicking, kicking down like this and they leave this. A trail of of garbage behind them, right? Of sand and dust, and killing, possibly killing corals or disturbing animals for sure. Uh, definitely disturbing their buddies. Um, not not a good scene uh, at all. So uh, how how to achieve it? Now, um, this is this is really interesting, actually. And and in the next video, we're going to have some live action uh, showing people doing this in the pool or or in the ocean. We'll see how it goes, um, but. If uh, so, actually, if you if you lay yourself out like this, right, um, in a wetsuit, and contrary to what my natural thinking was, you know, I always thought, you know, well, this suit is floaty, so if I put my my legs out, that neoprene would would float up. But but actually, it's it's quite the opposite. So uh, when when you're in a nice uh, prone trim position your legs out actually your body will tend to be weighted down by the legs right and that's why you see um, most people with their legs up like this somehow right so if you really my doll oh gosh it does <laughs> this is almost breaking but if you really were extreme and bent your legs all the way to your body like this which we'll show you in a video actually your your head will go down right and so the legs, the positioning of the legs in and out is a way to adjust the position of your body, right? In, in terms of uh, whether you're head up or net head down, right? As well, um, your arms will, will do the same thing, right? So if you, if you lay your arms out, that's going to contribute to a head down attitude. Of course, your legs have more effect because they're larger, right? And if I bring my arms in or sometimes you know, depending on what I'm doing, I might even have my arms all the way in to the side of my body like that if my, I'm really head heavy for some reason, right? And that would have the effect of, of bringing my, my head up, right? Um, this is all with a wetsuit on, by the way, right? Okay, um, in addition, right? So the body posture here, right? We want to, if possible, have your, uh, your stomach out right that should be ideally the lowest point in your body and your head your head should be uh back and uh honestly like resting right on the tank valve when when your head is back you should just feel the tank valve and truth be told i i'm always wearing a hood like even even in the warm uh weather i'm generally wearing a, a light hood for protection against jellyfish or whatever um and when you have a hood on that feeling of your head against the valve is not a good one the other plus of having uh, the the tank up far enough so that the valve is right there 
is uh, one of the things we teach in rescue is self-rescue and the ability to reach back and manipulate your own valve just in case it wasn't open to begin with or someone else messed with your tank just before you put it on and it was open but not open enough that you reach a certain depth and that air it will uh, cut off because it will not be able to feed uh, at the at a certain depth um, and we teach our divers to be able to reach back and manipulate that themselves and so if the valve isn't up here like some folks the valve is all the way halfway down their their back there no way they're going to reach that right other uh fine tuning there um when you see folks in this nice position in the water you'll also notice that their fins are parallel to the bottom right they're they're horizontal um and that has a purpose actually and i'll contrast that with this every once in a while i'll see someone in the water like this and what happens is um this does not give them good stability against up and down movement right because their fins are pointed up they will very easily point up and what happens is actually their side to side stability is compromised right so um when you have a decent spread to your legs right and you have your your fins out slightly actually you know usually we'll we'll have them out to the side just a bit what that does is that gives your body resistance to moving side to side because these fins are giving you stability some friction against the water right some resistance against the water so that's that's the nice position again I'm, uh, I'll move my legs in or out depending on if my body overall feels a little head heavy for this dive or this time in the dive or uh or foot heavy right now uh tank size how does tank size affect this well um you know we've got a body here now in japan we have a lot of dive sites that only have uh, 10 liter steel tanks and those are just a little bit smaller than aluminum 80s in terms of their uh, their volume, but they're they're quite short actually. Uh, they're made of steel. They're short. I think they're probably about 74 cubic feet or so. And you know, if that's fitting right here, um, that's kind of going to make, especially tall people, that's going to make them a little top heavy, right? That's going to make them a little top heavy. So um, if I'm feeling head heavy in the water, I'm going to counteract that two different ways. One way, I might have to make my legs a little bit straighter than I would normally like to. Right, and then if I move my arms in a bit, or I might even put them at my waist, right, and that's gonna serve to bring me up a bit. Now, that's the kind of body English that might help me with a shorter tank, right? Now, uh, let's say I have the opposite happening, I have a longer tank, right? Let's say uh, we have 12 liter steels here, we also have 14 liter steels here. Um, those 14 liters are going to go all the way down here. Now, for taller people, that might be perfect balance for them. For a shorter person, that actually might make their legs kind of sink, right? Another thing that can contribute to that is the fins that they have, right? We like to use uh, jet fins, which are really heavy. Um, and on some people, that can contribute to a foot-heavy uh influence in the water right okay so feet heavy i'm going to do the opposite as i did before i'm going to bend my legs in right uh, in addition i can make my arms longer right and that's going to give me a net effect of bringing my head back down all right that's going to help me out uh in that way all right and now uh, something to remember is that um you know, when you start your dive and you, you get your, your initial uh, adjustment and you're feeling good, uh, just remember, right, so as you're, you're diving, you're breathing, you're using that tank during the whole dive and the balance of that tank is changing, right? Um, you know, some tanks, for example, aluminum 80s are very uh, famous for, you know, when they become empty, their bottom gets heavy, right? an empty aluminum tank in the water, it's, it's floating with the valve exactly down, right? Uh, so the net effect of an aluminum 80 during the dive is slowly your butt is going to get lighter over the course of a dive. And other tanks will have other effects. So uh, always remember that uh, this, this balancing act is a dynamic thing, 
right? As you're using air, uh, you may have to move arms in, legs out, uh, right? It's, it's a dynamic uh, adjustment as the dive goes on, right? Okay, all right. Last thing, uh, talk about the exposure protection, right? Um, the rule I was talking about was for wetsuits, right? And actually, a dry suit is a slightly different animal, right? Because a dry suit has floaty bits uh, wherever you want to. And so, for example, for me, if my legs are feeling heavy, I can kind of squirt, you know, do a little body English, you know, get a little air into my legs, and then poof, my legs are going to be floating by themselves, essentially. Uh, same things with my hands. I happen to wear dry gloves, right? So if I get a little air into my gloves, and then my arms are, are floating by themselves, right? So in the next video, we'll have uh, some demonstrations underwater. Uh, but this is kind of the, the intellectual introduction um, to the concept. Hopefully that helps some of you. You can experiment underwater, right? Experiment Curl underwater next time you're in a pool or in the ocean. All right, get yourself horizontal. Bring those legs all the way in and relax yourself and notice how your body's going to pivot down. And then straighten them out and you'll notice your legs will go down. Okay, and you can also experiment and try out um, your arms, moving your arms out farther, in more, and then even down on your waist to see how that affects your balance, right? So once you get the hang of becoming a master of how your body English, right, you're uh, bending your torso, moving your legs and your arms, once you get the hang of that for any tank and any exposure protection, you should be able to uh, achieve a really nice position in the water, right? And then you can be a Jedi, all right? Okay, stay tuned for that skills video. Uh, thanks for joining in. All right. Okay, divers, if you've made it this far, thanks so much for watching. If you liked it, why don't you go ahead and hit the thumbs up. Uh, if you want to see more of this about once a week, I guess even on the off season, go ahead and hit subscribe. And if you'd like to come along and join the DDT team and dive with us, go ahead and hit, there's another link for that as well. Thanks for watching. See you soon on the beach. Bye-bye.